Welcome to Chandwell. My name is Michael and in this series we are following the scratch building of a large low relief hotel for behind Chandwell's station. I had hoped to show more in this video but I had a change of heart halfway through which meant that I've made this week's component twice. Let's dive straight into part 10, scratch building walls with depth. With a picture of the hotel I'm using for inspiration in front of me, I printed the key element to a piece of cheap A4 paper so that I could check the alignment of this all important wall. Just like the real hotel, there will be an underpass through this part of the building and I needed to make sure that it aligned properly with the ground on top of the retaining wall. This seemed about right, although it could do with nudging over half a millimetre. It looks like I've made a mistake with the alignment of the upper windows though. These should be more or less level with the leftmost windows on the flat roofed part. With the components printed to half millimetre card, another check can be made. I decided to add a doorway from the ballroom onto the terrace, but I did not account for the buttress or its capping, which partly obscures the doorway. It was an easy enough job to slice through the cap and the back of the buttress with a sharp scalpel. Once back in position, the doorway runs out onto the terrace without obstruction and I think it will add another little dimension to the back of the hotel. The real hotel in Bradford is dirty ashlar stone along most of its back. This part of the building though that I'm making now is more of a dressed stone and cleaner too. I intended to follow this pattern whilst keeping the dirty stone at track level. Once done though, I soon realised that what I had done didn't really fit very well. The scale scene's dressed stone texture was just too clean and didn't have much detail to it, especially next to the dirtied scale scene's ashlar texture I've used for the rest of the building. I made a ham-fisted attempt at dirtying it with weathering powders, but this just obliterated more of the detail and it looked worse. But in the end, I decided to cut my losses and use the same texture that I've used so far. There's only one thing to be done with this component. There's three and a half hours of cutting and sticking, squashed. This part of the building has really interesting walls. There are arches and columns, buttresses, tympanums and balconies. I therefore need to ensure that the walls I make are interesting and full of depth. I decided to make each of the four wall components from three layers of 0.5mm card so that I can overlap them and give some impression of depth to the walls. Let's take a look at the front wall. The front wall is made up of three components. They are all similar, but when you overlap them one on top of the other, you can see that certain parts of each layer show through. Each of the components was arranged across three sheets of A4, which were printed to sticky label and stuck to three sheets of half millimetre card. I like to get most of my cutting done in one sitting, so I spent an hour cutting out each component using light strokes of my knife and scalpel. Once done, I had a kit of parts ready to assemble into the walls of the ballroom. Arranged on top of each other, it's clear to see the 3D effect that the completed wall will have. I had to be careful with the textures when it came to aligning them. The bottom layer only has parts of the graffiti showing, so this was a simple starting point. I wrapped the texture around the lower parts of the next layer, which goes on top like this. I left the upper parts of the recess unwrapped, because this will need to wrap around the completed recess, which will be two layers deep. The second layer is glued to the first layer with PVA, using a scale model scenery right angle jig to help keep the positions right. Once glued together, I wrap the edges of the recess around both layers to make it look like a solid piece of wall. Next it's the top layer, and you can see here how the window apertures will be wrapped to give the impression of one solid wall two layers of card deep. I glue layer 3 to layer 2 with PVA. I wrap the windows which are two layers deep. I then wrap the edges around all three layers to make it look like one solid wall. There will be a lot more detail added to the walls as the build continues, but I think that this is a really good starting point. Compared to the first attempt, I am pleased with how this one has turned out, and I am happy that it looks good against the rest of the hotel. All that remains is to grab one of the world famous Chandwell cookery books and flatten the whole lot, before using a selection of clamps to hold everything together as the glue sets. With the time and materials wasted on the false start, these walls have taken me 13 and 3 quarter hours. I've used one sheet of basic paper, six A4 labels, seven sheets of half millimetre card, five sheets of photo paper, and one scalpel blade. This has taken the total cost of the hotel to £13.73, and the total time to 117 hours. 
windows and details next week, and hopefully an interesting surprise or two if my plans work out. So until then, thank you for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.